Hey there guys, welcome to the meat shop. Uh, in this video, we're gonna talk about uh, the top sirloin. I'm gonna show you how to cut and prepare it, how to save a little bit of money doing it yourself, and the characteristics of the top sirloin, how to identify it and what you can expect. Um, so if you find this video informational or beneficial, uh, please give it a like. Uh, I also love getting some feedback down below so I can make the videos better for you guys. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Hey there guys. So this here is the top sirloin. And uh, first I'm gonna go over how we're gonna save money doing this ourselves here today. So this is probably how you'll find them. Uh, vacuum packaged right from a, uh, a wholesaler like Costco or wherever you guys' wholesalers are, wherever you're at. But they'll come in one big lump chunk like this. And uh, that's how they come from the, from the plants, from the big manufacturing plants. And what the top sirloin is, is basically it's part of the, a primal, which is called the loin. And they'll knock off the top sirloin, which has a bunch of different cuts. And this is a subprimal. So you're, this is just about ready to cut into steaks, but it requires a little bit of cleaning. And that's why you can get a little bit cheaper from the wholesaler. So, and just so for example, like I went out, uh, looked at a couple little retail shops, or not little retail shops, I should say grocery chains. And uh, the price difference from a wholesale, like the wholesale price I get them for, and you can find them for in, in big, big shops is about, uh, kind of anywhere from $9.75 to $10 a kilogram, which is about $4.45 a pound, $4.75 a pound. So that's pretty cheap for a not bad steak. Um, but I guess, you mean, that's not quite, it comes like this. You're not quite ready to, it's not quite a steak yet. You'd ha you have, we'll do a little bit of work to it first. Um, versus the finished product, if you're buying cut steaks in the little trays ready to go, they're about $22 a kilogram. 9.95 a pound so uh, the finished steak is about twice the price of the wholesale product but again with the wholesale product we got to do a little bit of work to it to make it steak ready so that's the the kind of the price differences and all you need is basically uh, a trimming knife a nice sharp trimming knife and then you don't need this knife but this is a steak knife or a, a scimitar like what they call it and it's just easier with these big knives, you can make big, long strokes to cut your steaks. But you can do it with these guys too. It's just a little, a little more difficult. And then always a nice steel to keep your, keep your edge on your knife. So, yeah, they'll come like this. And also if you buy a case, I'm not sure how many people you're feeding or if you've got a big family, but if you buy these by the case, you can usually save, you know, 50 cents to a dollar a kilogram, 25 cents to 50 cents a pound if you get a case of them. So, uh, yeah comes off the loin it's not the most tender cut like the best three steaks off of beef in my opinion are the ribeye the strip loin and the tenderloin and the t-bone is just the strip loin and the tenderloin combined but this guy is a pretty good option if you're at a bar and it's steak special sports game day or whatever they're probably using a top sirloin because it's pretty affordable that's one of the best parts about this is it's not that expensive of a steak and it's still pretty good quality so, yeah, it's off the back of the beef right down here. This is a strip loin, rib high is a little higher. So it's the top sirloin. The beef uses it a little bit more when it's walking around and stuff. And the more an animal uses the muscle, the more connective tissues it develops. So it's a little bit tougher. One, of the, one thing I should mention is you can make this a better quality steak by just leaving it in your fridge. But make sure you, you, you look at the date because you want to go, you can leave this in your fridge. If your fridge is cold, you know, right around uh, one degree Celsius to five degrees Celsius. So that's 32 to 37 Fahrenheit, I think. I'm Canadian, so. So 32 to 37 Fahrenheit for 30 days. It's good, that's kind of, it's gonna age, it, leave it in this bag, it's called the wet age. The lactic acid that naturally builds up in the animal will make this cut slightly more acidic and it will break down the connective tissues that surround all the muscle fibers. So that's an easy way you can add value to this cut and make it a little bit better. 30 days, um, you can, they say you can go up to 50, um, but then you start maybe running into potential microbiological problems, spoilage, 
bacteria grow on and will ruin your meat. So around 30 days is probably the best. It's easy, you're not gonna run into any problems and you're gonna get a bunch of the uh, aging benefits. It's gonna be more tender and, and deepen the flavor of your, of your top sirloin or whatever other cut. So long as the seal holds, if the seal breaks and there's air, like right now I can't pull the plastic away from this cut, but if you can, you've had a leak in your packaging and you'll wanna, you'll wanna cut it and prep it right away. So speaking of cutting and prepping, let's get into it. I don't think I've missed anything. Top sirloin, pretty affordable cut. Not the most tender, but still pretty good. And uh, buy it at wholesale, you can get it for about half the price, but you have to do a little bit of prep work. So let's do it. Okay, I'm changing the angle up here so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better. You don't have to see my ugly mug. Um, so we'll open it up. This guy's uh, been aged 30 days, like I mentioned before there. So open it up and you sometimes you get a little bit of a little bit of drippage, that's normal. If you get a lot of dippage, drippage, it was probably frozen before. And so yeah, like I said, you can probably pick these up at, at Costco, and I forgot to mention, you can pick them up at your probably local butcher shop. But as you see, like this just looks like all fat here, and this is far from a steak yet. But uh, the top sirloin kind of has, uh, and it's also, a, I should mention the other names of the cut. Some people call it the top round, some people call it the top butt. Um, and then you got the, some people call it just the sirloin, which I think technically this is the sirloin and then this muscle is the top sirloin, I think. It's, but we'll just call it the sirloin. This whole thing is the sirloin. We'll cut some sirloin steaks. But there is two muscles. Like you can see, if you flip it around, this is, little piece here is an indicator. It's some really heavy connective tissue where it connects to a bone. And then directly below that, you can almost open it up with your finger that's the top sirloin cap muscle right there. And this is the sirloin muscle right here. And it's got some heavy fat and stuff on this side, which we'll trim off for our steaks. And if you look really closely, this stuff right here, this is all gonna get trimmed. This is bone skin. So it sits right against the, the hip bone. And in the plants, they use kind of gravity. So they'll mark it and then pull it down real hard and you'll get bone skin that comes off with it. So that's gonna come off and this heavy fat's gonna come off the underside. And the key to that is to just get your knife, your sharp trimming knife, just below. Because you don't wanna be, you know, you paid for it, you don't wanna be wasting the red stuff, the meat. Just below. You see, you kind of just, it'll peel and lift away. Now, when you're looking at this, you're gonna separate this cap muscle from this top sirloin muscle. And right here, sometimes there's a little gland. That's kind of where you wanna, or a heavy, it's gonna be heavy white hard fat, soft meat hard fat, and you're gonna wanna go down right there. And it's, you'll see in a second, it just peels and opens up to the cap. Come down. Just following that hard fat, trying not to take any meat. You see right here, it's gonna peel. If you can see those little, they're kind of like webby bits, that's, that's a seam. So you wanna follow, you hear that? The seams. See so a knife in there, and it's, you know you're in the right spot when you don't have to use your knife too much. It's just a cut, and that's gonna, see right there, I'm separating the cap, this muscle here, from the top sirloin. And at some point here, you can see right about down there, there's, there's no more muscle left. And it kinda, it's a triangular shape. So you can just take your knife, cut through the fat, and in one stroke, you have now separated the top sirloin from the top sirloin cap. These are two different steaks. This is a really, really nice piece of meat in my opinion. It works wicked for making roasts or steaks. Same with this piece. So we'll, uh, now we've separated the cap from the top sirloin, just like that, by following that big seam, try to do that, and peeling and lifting. You, we'll set this guy aside for now, and we'll just trim up and finish the top sirloin cap. So this is the side that was attached to the top of the other, and. There's a bit of a, 
right along here, real heavy fat. So you just get your knife, just get under the fat, and see again, it'll, it almost peels and you, you know you're in the right spot when things are peeling and lifting away. If you're having to cut too much, and it's just a matter of find, you know, doing this a couple times so you find it, find the right spots. Then down along this, and this stuff here, um, there's a little bit of this kind of like heavy connective tissue stuff in this fat. And you want to take that out. But if you guys are hunters or home sausage makers, this is pretty nice fat to save for a, for a sausage recipe. This stuff here, it's kind of got like a little bit of a bone skin stuff. Uh, focus, focus. But that's uh, not working very good. But it's, yeah, this is too tough to run through your grinder and you're going to taste that in your sausage or ground beef in the end. So you don't want to save this. But this fat here, it's nice white hard fat. So you can save that for doing ground beef, if you have wild game or making sausage. If you have really lean pork or something like that, you get some pork loins on sale, you can add that to it. But then, so we've, we've knocked that heavy bit of fat off, but there is a bit of kind of heavy connective silver skin or whatever you want to call it down this side. So we'll just trim that off, set it aside. There's a little bit of fat down here and, and silver skin and connective tissue, kind of like a membrane. So you just come down the side, mark, get rid of that membrane, save this nice hard fat. And now you have a bit of a silver skin you can see right here. Get your knife just underneath it. Key this, have a nice sharp knife. And you trim that out of there. Garbage pile. All right, so that's probably good enough for the bottom side. If you're real fussy and you really don't like any of that stuff, spend the time trimming up the rest of that. Now, <clears throat> flip it over and feel for a real heavy, hard, fat spots. I trim all my steaks down to about a quarter inch. People don't really like more than a, a quarter inch of fat on their steaks. Well, I do, but most people don't. If you do like lots of beef fat, because this is the outside fat. Where the fat comes from makes a big difference on the quality you're gonna get. If it's outside fat, which is subcutaneous fat, it's hard and it's got lots of good flavors if your beef has been finished nice. If it's body cavity fat, it's kind of tallowy, it will coat your mouth, and, and you want to get rid of that stuff. But this is outside fat, it's real nice. This is stuff you want to crisp up on the grill. So we'll take her down to a quarter inch. Then we want to look at this, and you, and you want to make sure you cut it against the grain. It's real key, against the grain. So you guys can see there's some big veins running this way. And I, this whole muscle runs like that. All the muscles run this way. So when I'm cutting my steaks, I want to make a point of cutting it against the grain. So I will cut my steaks that way. As you can see, that big grain. And the reason we do that is it, is it, uh, it makes it kind of, it's the bush's way of helping the chef or the cook make the steak more tender. If I was to cut with the grain, you'd have these big long muscle fibers that the, your guests or customers or whatever would have to chew versus if I cut them down into smaller bits, it makes it more tender. So we'll square this end off and we're never gonna throw away stuff like this. You can always save this and make stew or stir fry or save it if you guys have a grinder and we'll make sausage out of it one day. So we'll put it over here and save it. So we got it squared off and that's starting to look like a pretty yummy steak. And I usually square off this end because it kind of tapers. Shouldn't have done that without showing you guys. But it kind of tapers off, so I just square it up. Makes it look a little better. And you know, from here on, it's, it's your discretion. You like a big, thick steak? Cut a big, thick steak. I usually cut them three quarters to an inch. And there you go. Look at that. A lovely, like that marbling. This guy would be good. So that's a top sirloin cap steak. Pretty easy. Peel it off the cap. Trim off the fat off the bottom. Save the hard fat. Peel off the silver skin. Trim this down to a quarter inch. Slice against the grain. You have a beautiful steak. I should mention too, <clears throat> I've taken these guys whole before I cut that steak off. And you know, just rub them down with your favorite spice rub and throw them on the barbecue or in the oven or on the smoker. And they make really nice roasts just like that. And the beauty is since it's kind of tapered, 
You guys can see that, like this end is thick and this end is thin. You got a little bit for everybody. This is a little bit more well done and you can have this, you know, pink to rare if you want. So pretty cool cut that way. But yeah, that's the top sirloin cap, which is really just a, a sirloin steak. Mm -mm -mm. And I re-square these off sometimes. Save this for stew or sausage. Don't be throwing it out. You get down to this end. Now some guys will butterfly these. I don't really love a butterfly steak myself, but you just go to the fat side. Stack these up out of the way. You just go to the fat side, because you it's getting pretty small. Like this is only, you know, like three and a half inches. Pretty small steak. It would be like, you know, like four ounce steak. So some guys, you just mark down three quarters of the way through the steak, and then mark down again. Save this for stew. Trim the fat off this side. This is not gonna be the most beautiful butterfly steak. And you have a little bit bigger steak that way. They're not, they're not as nice though. People don't tend to love these. But that's how you get another extra steak out of it. I'm not going to though. Stew, save for sausage. All right. So that's the top sirloin cap. Look at that, easy peasy. I'm gonna weigh this after and get a weight for you guys and let you know kind of how much this would cost. Trim this down a little bit more, whoops. And it's totally up to you guys. If you like that fat, don't trim it off. Take it down to a quarter inch. Take it all off if you wanna get rid of the fat. So we'll set those guys aside for a finished product. All right, so that was kind of the easier of the two pieces. Now we have the top sirloin. And again, we gotta do a little bit of trimming here. We gotta take care of that bone skin. There's a little bit of silver skin here. You want that off. And it's all the same. Just get your knife just underneath, trying to leave as much red stuff on as possible. And you're not gonna save this for sausage. It is too tough. You're gonna, you're gonna notice it in your sausage. You don't want it in your ground beef because it's, it's tough. You'll taste it no matter what. Garbage. Or save it for your dogs. You just spend a little time just getting underneath the heavy bits of fat. Just the fat though, leave the meat on. And sometimes when they come from the plant like this, it's, they're, they're working so fast and so hard, they sometimes kind of gouge into these. And when you're cutting the steaks, it's gonna be kind of annoying. So you can get just underneath that and make it flush. And this is awesome meat, it's top sirloin. It's lean and yummy, don't waste it, save it for grinding. You guys are all gonna have grinders by the end of this series. You get just under the silver skin. And notice I'm always cutting away from myself. Like I lift this, peel it over, get my knife, and there's no way if this knife comes out, I'm gonna cut myself, right? Always be cautious of where you're aiming your knife. So just spend a little bit of time cutting off all the silver skin off the bottom of that. So that's pretty good. You know, there's no silver skin, just fat and meat, which is fat is fine. Well, a little bit, uh, your, whatever your tolerance is, I should say. You flip over this side, and so this is where that, the cap came off. Now over here, you have a little bit of fat, and it does get a little bit heavy on these ends, so you wanna take it down to whatever your preference is. I do a quarter inch. Save that nice white back fat for sausage, or adding to some lean pork or something like that, or wild game. Now, we have options, if you're, well, right here, you're gonna have some tough, heavy connective tissue. So you're gonna lose a little bit out of here. You can almost see that eye right there. That's a big tendon. So if you're a big carnivore, you can actually, you can just stake these this way and you'll have these huge, like 16 ounce top sirloin steaks. Now, again, you wanna, you wanna look at it and see which ways the grains run. And you kind of got two different muscles. So I'm gonna show you, I usually cut these, if I'm doing eight ounce steaks in half, if I'm doing six ounce steaks in thirds. Cause you have a muscle here that kind of runs this way. And then you have another muscle, set of, set of muscle grains that runs this way. 
So when you do cut it in the six ounces, you can cut it perfectly against the grains, which helps your end product. But it's, it, it, like, it helps a bit. It's not gonna, if you cut with the grain, it's not gonna completely ruin your steak. It's definitely not gonna be as good, but it's not gonna wreck it. But it, so do your best to try and look at the grains and see which way they're running, make note, and cut against them. So I'll do one big old carnivore steak. And uh, what we'll do often is we'll face these. So you just take that first quarter inch off because it's got you know a little bit of bone dust and stuff in it from when they run through the saws. And let's see if you've got heavy bits of uh, cartilage. Uh, like this, you want to take that off. Garbage pile, ground beef pile. So if you want steaks, hungry man steaks, cut them three quarters of an inch thick, right across the grain, and you got a big old whopper of a steak right there. But see, you kind of got, there's this big piece of connective tissue. You're never gonna be able to chew that, so you'll always wanna get rid of those. And I don't like cutting these big carnivore guys that way because you're gonna have steaks with a little hole in the middle. I don't know, I just, it's probably fine. I just, not as nice to look at. So that, that's a big top sirloin steak. I don't cut many that way just because they're too big. So, like I said, you can almost see they're all going to be the same. There's this little vein of fat. That's basically where you'd want to make the mark if you wanted to cut six ounces. And then you would just cut this side in half. But we'll cut, uh, yeah, sure, we'll cut six ounces. So eight ounces, you'd cut it in half. Six ounces, I'm going to follow this vein and cut that side in half. So we'll cut sixers today for you guys. Same principle, though. It's going to get more portions this way. All right, so in here you can see it, this middle piece, middle piece has the heavy connective bit and you gotta take care of that because it's tough. From there, you just basically make your steaks however thick you want them, quarter inch, one inch, did I say a quarter inch? Three quarter inch. Now you're gonna get to the end where it's like this wedge shaped piece. It's just all fat on the back. This isn't gonna make a steak, but it would make awesome stew. Cause that back fat, you sear that good. You, it's real awesome stew. So save this stuff for stew or stir fry. Take this fat off if you wanna make it into stir fry. Set it aside. So there's your, your top sirloin steak. Man, that meat's got beautiful color. I should eat this today. And if you want, you can trim this bit of fat up, but there's a top sirloin steak, three quarter inch. So that side is easy side to take care of. There's no, we already did all the trimming when it was a whole muscle. So this stuff, uh, this outside piece would have had connective tissue and stuff on it and the bottom would have, but we took care of it already. It's easier to do it when the muscle's whole than to go and redo each one of these steaks individually. This other little side piece is, and if you wanted to guys, you could throw strings around these, suck them up tight so it would be nice and round, and you would call them top sirloin medallions. And some people wrap bacon around them, which is delicious. Get two of that. Just square that little end off. Nice big thick guy. We'll do two little guys. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I always go to this guy for cutting the steaks. It's so much easier. I don't know if you've noticed, it's just one big stroke and back. This little guy, it's hard. You know, maybe sawing away at it. So this big guy is the guy to make the steaks with. I don't know, you can get these at all sorts of butcher supplies, shops. I get lots of my stuff from halfords.ca. Uh, they have a great selection. So this guy is the middle piece. He's the one that's got the heavy bit of connective tissue in the top sirloin. Got to take care of that. And as you get further down the steak, that big uh, tendon kind of angles away. So you're going to be able to cut it off the outside pretty, e pretty easily. Mm. And try and cut them as consistently as possible. So it's one, pull, I usually pull back, push, 
and pull back and the stake is right off. One, two, yeah, one, two. Square this end up. Save this for stew or stir fry. So, if you can see this vein here, you're never gonna be able to chew that. Just knock a little bit of meat off, save that. Get rid of that connective tissue. Done, done, done. And I mean, you don't have to, but this is what we do for the, like we cut steaks for uh, about a half dozen bars and restaurants and stuff around here. And they don't have time to do this, right? So we do it for them. Uh, what I, the reason I say is you don't have to do this. So you can just set it aside on your plate when you're done cooking it, so. Sometimes when they're in the middle here, it's a little bit hard. But you just dig it out. And you kind of got a hole in your steak. They're my favorite steaks, but. One more here. And I guess I should have mentioned too, that last, when it was whole, we, you could use this as a roast too. You could have cut it in half, tied strings around it, and have a top sirloin roast. I just decided to stake it all the day here, I guess. All right, so there you go, guys. There's the top sirloin steaks. How many did we get out of this? All right, so out of that, counting this big guy. Oops, you guys can't see them all. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So you got 18 off there and six off the cap, 24 steaks total. With about two and a half pounds of scraps. So you get two and a half pounds of scraps, 18-ish steaks off the middle, and six of these nice cap steaks. So you guys have it. That's how to cut a top sirloin. Uh, that's the characteristics, you know. These are gonna be pretty good steaks. They're not gonna melt in your mouth, but you know, season them up. Let them age 30 days in that backpack before you cut them, and they're pretty damn good. Look at this guy. Freaking good or what? Yum. All right, guys. So if you learned anything, <clears throat> if you like this tutorial, if I could, you know, if you want me to slow down, be more thorough, have any questions, fire me a question down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you and answer it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, subscribe, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, enjoy your top sirloin steaks, guys. Take care. All right there guys, so I said I would show you how to save the money doing this. Um, so I took a weight of everything. I took the weight of the steaks, the little bit of pile for ground beef, the little pile for uh, fat for sausage, feeding your birds, adding to ground beef, feeding your dog, and then I took the weight of the scraps that are just connective tissue and stuff that's not really good for anything. So this whole thing weighed uh, 6.9 kgs, which is 15 pounds. So if you'd have bought this, this whole thing from the wholesaler cost um, $67.55 up in Canada. Uh, it's gonna be wherever you're at, the price is gonna change. Um, I took these out and then just weighed the steaks. And the steaks you get, I got off this was 5.3 kgs, 11 and a half pounds. So the total thing was 15 pounds. I got 11 and a half pounds of steaks. Uh, if you were to buy these steaks at, at the grocery store, they would have cost $116. Uh, you wouldn't get these piles with that. That whole primal we bought cost 67.55 up here. Wherever you're at, the price is gonna change. But basically, you can cut these steaks, and even if you mess up a bunch of them, it's basically, half the price. The difference was $49. If I was to buy this in the store, 115 bucks. Buy it wholesale, 70 bucks. So you save 45 bucks cutting it yourself. Everyone loves saving money. <laughs> and you get this and this. Not that, that's waste. This and this. There you go, guys. Watch it a couple times, practice, mess a few up. It doesn't matter. You're saving money, you're doing it yourself. It's pretty cool. They're pretty good steaks. Hope you enjoyed.